First of all, I'd like to thank organizers for giving me this okay, wonderful opportunity to, pro, uh, to present my work and for organizing this um, very nice, simple conference. Okay. I changed the title a bit, Understanding the Chromatic Remodeling Code. So in this talk, I would like to um, emphasize how genetic and epigenetic factor affect the chromatic remodeling and how the um, the uh, how we find the chromatic remodeling code that's the arrangement of various chromatic remodeling marks and their uh, effect on gene expression and we try to find the sequence signature associated with the chromatin remodeling okay first I start with the genetics um, in genetics we try to translate uh, genetic information encoded in the genome, and we find that we try, we aim to find the um, sequence variation that's affecting the morphological variation. And the sequence can, sequence variation can occur as cis regulatory elements or transacting loci, and they eventually change the gene expression of target genes or activity of target gene, and then uh, change the morphology. In epigenetics, Epi, epi means over, so uh, we try to understand molecular mechanism that um, that affect morphological variation, and this morphological variation is transmitted to the progeny, but uh, the uh, the morphological variation cannot be explained by the DNA sequence. So um, that's that can be independent of DNA sequence or the interaction between uh, genetic information and uh, environment. Um, the, um, the, as you know, the eukaryotic genome is packaged as chromatin structure, and the basic structure of chromatin looks like this. Um, the genomic DNA is packaged as nucleosome in nucleus into nucleosome. So here's an octave of proteins, and uh, 147 DNA uh, double helix, they wire up around the nucleosome structure. And this chromatin structure can be modified, remodeled by the uh, density or preference of nucleus formation, or the histone uh, protein can be modified, covalently modified by the uh, methylations, uh, acetylations, and many covalent modification, or the histone, uh, histone can be replaced by histone variants such as H2A can be replaced by H2A.C, H3 can be uh, H3A can be replaced by H3.3, and DNA itself can be modified into the by methylation, um, methylation as cytosine. So um, this chromatin structure affect the gene expression. Um, so um, the um, from from nucleosome highly packed nucleosome, uh, the uh, um, to be uh, a gene can be. Uh, to be gene tra transcribed, uh, it can it should form the um, open chromatin structure, and this open chromatin structure preferentially associated with the low nucleosome density, and they they um, they they lacking DNA methylation as cytosine, or they preferentially contain H3K4 trimethylations. So H3K4 trimethylation is a um, chromatin remodeling marker of open chromatin structure. In heterochromatin region, the genomic DNA is highly pack packaged by nucleosome structure, and they um, they lack uh, they de are depleted of H3K4 trimethylation, but they are enriched with high nucleosome formation and um, histone deacetylation. So acetylation is removed, or they are enriched with the cytosine methylations. The chromatin structure and epigenetic factors are highly dynamic. So in, uh, in a eukaryotic genome, they carry a multiple copy of histone modifiers, chromatin modifiers. So for example, in acetylation, acetyltransferase, they, they put acetylation at histone, and, if, um, and then the chromatin, the genomic DNA form open chromatin structure, and histone deacetylase Lases, they remove acetylation and then it reverted to the closed, um, closed, highly packed chromatin structure. 
So um, to understand how dynamic uh, chromatin remodeling, so in this case, we used histone acetylation and deacetylation. So we used the histone deacetylase mutant. So when the histone deacetylase is not functional, then the histone acetylation cannot be removed. So the, um, when we compare um, gene expression with, between histone deacetylation mutated, non-functionalized histone deacetylase and wild type, we may see the, uh, the genes affected uh, by the histone deacetyl mutation, they will show high exp um, hi higher expression compared to wild type. So when we uh, did microarray uh, between histone deacetylase mutant and wild type, as the gene is more affected by histone deacetyl mutation, they show higher expression variation uh, among various uh, developmental conditions and also among various environmental conditions. And those genes highly affected by histone deacetylase, histone deacetylase mutation, they also show um, species-specific expression. So in this study, we, um, we find that the dynamic histone acetylation and deacetylation, removing the histone acetylation, they contribute to the uh, condition-specific expression pattern. And this showed the um, um, heterochromatin formation. So in, heter in heterochromatin region, the genomic DNA is highly packaged by high nucleosal formation. And in this heterochromatin region, the uh, double-strand RNA are preferentially generated. And they, uh, from these double-strand RNA, uh, small interference RNAs are preferentially generated. And then they, they um, preferentially interact with the uh, HSVK9 methyl transferases. Um, that's the marker of heterochromatin or DNA methyl transferases. So this formed the feed for um, regulatory network. As you, um, so um, this suggests that the small RNA, DNA methylation, and histone modification, all these chromatin remodeling mechanisms are co-regulated um, um, for the chromatin structure coordination. Based on previous studies, we suggest the chromatin remodeling code hypothesis. So um, this is not uh, the new uh, new hypothesis. Um, from um, previously, the uh, Dr. Ellis lab they suggested histone code hypothesis. Uh, from their hypothesis, the um, presence of specific histone modification they uh, affect the gene expression, and as well as histone modification. DNA methylation and small RNA and uh, various his, uh, chromatin remodeling mark, they are coordinated and as well as their presence, their distinct arrangement and um, their combination uh, play another array and that can be a platform um, restricting interaction between transfer factor and genes. So to infer the chromatin remodeling code, we integrate diverse uh, chromatin remodeling mark from um, heterogeneous data types, such as um, chromatin immunoprecipitation and microarray, or we can do chromatin immunoprecipitation and next generation sequencing, and then we can um, integrate those data set and we we investigate their uh, correlative relationship, or we can cluster the genome region by their arrangement and how they affect the gene expression. So I think this can be a, a good example um, investigating the chromatin remodeling mark. So in this case, we integrated various histone remodeling and DNA methylation all together around transfer star sites. So each row represents one gene of trans, um, from transfer star site and their upstream and downstream 1KB region. So we can cluster the, um, this coding region by their chromatin remodeling profiles. And this, um, this show the um, chromatin remodeling profile around transfer star site can be um, categorized into 10 groups. Um, one uh, very obvious group is the, uh, group number one and group number two. In this group, the first group showed um, um, very high, narrow peak 
at transistor site uh, of H3K9 oscillation and H3K4 trimethylation. We also observed them um, uh, group number two. They they are also enriched with the H3K9 oscillation and H3K4 trimethylation at the transistor site, but they show a, a much broader arrangement of those trend, um, histone modifications. So we examined how this um, chromatin um, remodeling arrangement affect the gene expression pattern. So to look at the gene expression pattern, we looked at gene expression level um, in leaf. This is Arabidopsis saliana in leaf, um, where the, these um, histone modification and DNA methylations are measured, and their expression variation along the, uh, across the various developmental stages. So the group number one show high expression in leaf, and they, they show low variance, that means they are constitutively expressed. Uh, they maintain the same high expression level in other developmental stages. And the group number two show a broader um, distribution of H3K4 trimethylation and H3K9 oscillation. And we, s we find that this group also show high expression in, in a, a one tissue, but they, their uh, expression, uh, expression variation is very high. That means their expression is condition specific. Um, this, this, the second group also show the um, um, species specific expression compared to the uh, closely related species and uh, um, artificial hybrid compared to the mid parent values. So this um, distinct arrangement of um, chromatin remodeling mark, they are, uh, they are associated with the specific um, biological functions. So the first group show highly uh, high expression and constitutively highly expressed genes, and they are uh, preferentially uh, involved in the translation and protein folding, so um, obviously essential uh, functions. And the group number two show they um, um, leaf specifically highly expressed genes, so they are involved in the leaf specific biological process such as photosynthesis or um, response to water deprivation. So they are condition specifically expressed genes. So, and next, we, um, we try to understand if the DNA sequence based composition context, they um, facilitate these uh, specific chromatin remodeling process. So um, we did this research based on the previous um, Pre previous studies showing that um, in transcription, um, interaction between um, distant acting regulatory elements and the transfer star site, they, they require um, very um, flexible interaction between DNA, double strand DNA. And this transcription regulation is associated with the distinct organization of chromatin remodeling marks. And also, um, the DNA-based composition um, itself also associated with the DNA flexibility based on um, based on our studies before, and and the chromatin remodeling complexes sometimes interact with the uh, proteins specifically recognizing the base base pair composition. So we use the um, whole nucleosome chip sequencing data and H3K4 trimethylation in human cells based on, um, so we can extract the 147 DNA, uh, double, hel double helix DNA base, base pair composition from uh, nucleosome chip sequencing and H3K4 trimethylation sequencing. And then we first looked at the uh, position specific base pair composition in dinucleotide. And as, as well known, this, um, Position specific dinucleotide composition show periodicity around the uh, center. Uh, however, um, as well as periodicity, the distinct base pair composition between H3 and H3K4 trimethylation, different uh, chromatin remodeling, they showed the um, a more significant difference of their base pair composition. So, so we now, so now we looked at the um, 
position independent base pair composition. So we use the six more DNA sequence composition and how they are uh, more enriched compared to the background genome component uh, composition. So um, we we examine the 6 mRNA DNA sequence enrichment and depletion in H3K4 trimethylation chip sequencing in various uh, human cell types like uh, immune cell CD4 positive, a different condition resting state, activated state, and um, hematopoietic stem cells, HCD36+, or CD133+, human embryo stem cell, and uh, very well established human uh, cancer cell line, HeLa cells. And, um, before the H3K4 trimethylation are known to be um, tissue specific or cell type specifically arranged. And however, I even though their, their arrangements are very di uh, diverse among cell types, the, the sequence composition associated with the, this chromatin remodeling are consistently maintained in various cell types. And uh, as well known, the nucleosome sequence composition are also um, consistently maintained in different conditions. When you compare the H3 nucleosome and H3K4 trimethylation nucleosome, they show significant correlation, but compared to between the same, um, same, same histone remodeling, they sh show weak uh, correlation. That suggests that these two, um, these two nucleosome type, they, they have, have different DNA sequence preference or composition. So based on this um, position independent DNA sequence composition um, from uh, 147 base pair DNA sequence, we can predict if those sequence will preferentially form H3K4 trimethylation nucleosome or not by uh, probability model. And we further uh, try to understand how the whole genome sequence, whole chromosome um, sequence composition affect the of this um, important active, active chromatin marking H3K4 trimethylation nucleosome arrangement. So we try to um, incorporate this assumption into our model. So first, um, first assumption is the chromatin remodeling is a dynamic process, and DNA sequence context may affect the chromatin remodeling landscape. And we, uh, we consider two or uh, three states the DNA sequence is not um, included, does not form the nucleosome, or um, the, uh, the base pair is included in H3K4 trimethylation nucleosome, or um, nucleosome not containing H3K4 tri trimethylations. And in, in this state, the base, uh, the, um, this one base pair can be um, change it to either state and um, and the and the one nucleosome formation require 147 base pairs so the adjacent sequences uh, also affect the uh, chromatin um, histone modification uh, formation so we consider this um, this assumption to our model so we um, this shows the flow chart of our model and validation. So um, as, as shown before, we identified the sequence specificity of H3K4 trimethylation and H3 nucleosome. And then we can compare in short sequence how if they, um, their probability of forming H3K4 trimethylation or nucleosome not containing H3K4 trimethylation. And then we incorporate it into this parameter into modified hidden marker model. So from the uh, first base pair and to the last base pair of chromosome, we try to um, calculate the probability in a one base pair resolution, how if they will form the histone modification or just nucleosome or they will be depleted of nucleosome. And we validated our prediction with the um, ship sequencing data um, measured in vivo. Okay. All right. So um, our model um, calculate the from one um, from one target uh, base pair. We calculate the uh, from first um, chromosome base pair to the 
um, the target base pair, how will they form, um, form each uh, position of the nucleosome. And then we also uh, incorporate backward, um, uh, that means the prop with the, this state um, from next to the last base pair of the chrom chroma chromosome, we incorporate um, those two uh, uh, procedures together. So we can compare if one base pair um, will, uh, will be at the at specific position of the nucleosome. Um, a nucleosome are modified and unmodified or they, or they are depleted of the nucleosome. So, and then we, um, uh, we combined all together. So we, uh, our aim is that if the one, uh, if one base pair will be included in the uh, HCK for trimethylated nucleosome. So we incorporate all this um, probability, including this one base pair. So um, from this method, we examined how our prediction um, work well compared to the known prediction. Uh, known experimental data. So E2F2 and GAPDH, they are well known that they um, that they, their promoter region it, um, is uh, forms HCK for trime isolation, and this uh, um, their promoter sequence context actually uh, predicted to be high HCK for trime isolation. And also we can compare with the one base pair resolution with the, our our prediction probability prediction with the uh, chip sequencing da data in various cell types, and we, we see, uh, we can see, see that uh, their correlation is highly significant. And we uh, measure the performance by precision and recall analysis, and uh, it turned out to be uh, performed very well. Um, so, and then we examined if the um, whole genome sequence context um, of facilitating the histone modification, H3K for trimosyl modification associated with the specific role of genetic elements such as transcriptor sites or exon intron junction and transcript termination sites. And these, these important genetic elements directing the pole to transcription, they are enriched with the, uh, their, their sequence itself uh, facilitate formation of H3K for trimethylations and important the regulator of the gene expression. So CTCF binding site and P300, RNA pole 2 as their, um, uh, so their intensity of the um, uh, regu regulation by this protein can be inferred from the uh, chip sequencing density at one base pair at a, at a, at a genome low site, and then we can compare with their, their um, sequence probability of HCK for trimethylation. And this, as, um, this show high, um, very significant correlation. And we can also uh, see that the important transfer factor binding sites um, the, uh, affecting, uh, they are known to be bind, bound to enhanced element, ER, or androgen receptor, FOXA1, and the transfer factor binding, KLF4, OCT4, TAF1, nano SOX2, they are essential for um, embryonic stem cell. So, all this show that the important regulatory elements, they, they, their sequence, um, uh, sequence context um, facilitate formation of H3K for trimethylation. And we also uh, looked at uh, if, if there is any H3K for trimethylation that's, uh, that's not um, following the sequence context. So this, this is the proportion of the genomic region they show the high H3K for trimethylation formation based on chip sequencing, but their, um, uh, their sequence context or prediction by our method show low probability of formation of H3K for trimethylation. And we see the, um, these um, um, distantly acting the enhancer elements site. They, are, um, they show higher force negative rate. That means um, this, this genome region are preferentially uh, form H3K for trimethylation, but their sequence context is not facilitating the, their um, H3K for trimethylation nucleosome. This, they can be epigenetic because it's not explained by our uh, sequence-based model or our model cannot capture their um, modification. So um, in some, um, 
our study suggests that both genetic factor and epigenetic factor affect the chromatin remodeling. Um, so the uh, DNA sequence context in human genome, um, some, uh, some, uh, they, their, their context facilitate chromatin remodeling process, and also chromatin remodelers, they, they are specific, condition specifically express, and they're, exp they're, they're controlling their activity affect the chromatin remodeling. So um, my conclusion is that um, um, dynamic uh, modulation of chromatin structure and their specific organization affect the gene expression. And uh, we also see that um, chromatin remodeling is affected by genetic factors. So uh, I think that our model can be one uh, good uh, model to, to translate um, human genome sequence. So I appreciate um, um, so general support from Samsung Electronics and some, um, Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology and NIH. Um, so we, a quick ad advertisement, we just started the system biology group and we are looking for enthusiastic systems biologists and bioinformatics, bioinform um, research scientists in bioinformatics and like um, um, collaborators and thank you very much. So we're actually over time. Um, so if there's one quick question, we can take it. Otherwise, uh, we can, well, let's break for coffee then. Thanks again. Okay, thank you.